Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It's 7.30 on September 16th. Thanks for being up and with me this morning if you're joining me live. If you're joining me later on in the day or a different day, thanks for taking time to spend about 15 minutes with us reflecting on uh, some element of God's Word or truth and then taking a moment to pray. So thanks for being with me. Uh, yesterday, we introduced a very simple thought. Reality matters. So what we believe about reality matters. So we believe that the order and regularity of our universe only makes sense if God is real. Accidents don't produce order. So reality is ordered and regular. Okay, so here, here's what I want to add to that today. Reality won't bend to your preferences. I know it's not what you wanted to hear because we all like to think that reality will bend to our preferences. But reality actually won't bend to your preferences. So let me give you a, a couple of quick uh, analogies or illustrations. Uh, first one, a few years ago, my, uh, my daughter had she had something exciting. I can't remember exactly what it was. She was looking forward to it. I think it was a play date. And, and um, uh, I think it was, you know, like the next week on Sunday, she was having a, a play date with one of her friends. Anyway, like I said, this was a week away. And uh, every day, she just incessantly asked us, how many more days till Sunday? How many more days till Sunday? How many more days till Sunday? Till we get to that play date, right? And after a few days, she was getting impatient, and I suspect we may have been too. So how much longer until Sunday, she asked for the hundredth time. And we said, well, today's Wednesday. We have to go through today, and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, before we get to Sunday, which was the day of the play day. Well, she had had enough of that, and she said to us in exasperation, she says, she asked us, well, why don't we just not do it that way, <laughs> right? So in other words, why don't we just skip right to Sunday? Why don't we just pretend like the other days don't exist? <laughs> it's a great idea, right? So but we, we had to break our heart because we had to tell her, well, that's not actually how reality works. We can't skip to Sunday. Reality won't bend to our preferences. I often say it this way to my children. They love and hate this phrase, but they've heard it many times. Reality has edges. Reality has edges. It, that's true in the physical world, and it's also true in the moral world, which is where we're going to be headed in just a minute. I want to give you one more example, though, maybe a little bit more poignant and powerful example. About a month ago, my kids came across an article in uh, Popular Mechanics about an eccentric rocket enthusiast who had really become obsessed with building um, steam-powered rockets. So just imagine strapping yourself to a super-powered tea kettle, and I think you'd get the idea. So he was going for height, he was going for distance, he was even flirting with the outer reaches of our atmosphere. And here's how the article described him. This is fascinating. He had a very high IQ, but he was a guy who wouldn't always buy into science even when he was betting his life on it. He saw the laws of physics as something he might hedge, like an investor shorting a stock. He'd sit down and take a bunch of notes, and then he wouldn't do anything you told him to. He just had so much faith in himself. Okay, I want you to catch a couple things out of that. He saw the laws of physics as something he might hedge. And he had so much faith in himself. Now, I mean no disrespect toward this man. But the laws of physics did not adjust for him and he died 
at 400 miles per hour in a nosedive in the Mojave Desert with a steaming tea kettle behind him. His faith in himself did not move reality. So again, reality does not bend to our preferences. Reality has edges. Now, we're all usually pretty quick to get this when it comes to physical laws, although there are outliers like this eccentric rocket man who thought that the laws of physics, physics were things that he could hedge. But, but here's what I want us to understand. Moral laws are just as fixed as physical laws. Moral laws have edges too. Moral laws don't bend for our preferences. So you cannot hedge the moral laws any more than you can hedge physical laws. Scripture teaches that just as God has woven his physical laws into creation, he has woven his moral law into it, even etching it onto our hearts. So this is a great book uh, called What We Can't Not Know. Here's the book called, you gotta, gotta love the guy's name, J. Buczajewski. Uh, it delves into the depths of this conversation. Now, this is a really deep book. I mean, this one will make you think quite a bit. Very deep book. But here's the gist. Reality is not only knowable, it is known. It is known. Moral laws are not only knowable, they are known. We can't not know them because God has hardwired them into creation, even writing them on our hearts. Any claim that we don't know them is a lie. So let me show you. Even the thief knows it's wrong to steal. You know why? Because he does not want you to steal from him. Even the liar knows it's wrong to lie because he doesn't want you to lie to him. Even the adulterer and the fornicator knows it's wrong to be unfaithful to your spouse or to live with somebody to whom you're not married because he doesn't want you doing what he's doing. He doesn't want you sleeping around with anybody and everybody. But here's the thing. All of us try to hedge the moral laws. I can't imagine we look too much different to God than that eccentric rocket man in Popular Mechanics who basically believed that he could outsmart and outmaneuver reality. My friends, reality really does have edges. These edges will not bend to us and we cannot outmaneuver them. They are truly fixed. God's law is absolute. Our problem is that we have too much faith in ourselves. We hear God's word and then we, we go do our own thing. We actually think we can outmaneuver reality. We think we can fudge God's moral law. We think we can run up against its edges and suffer no ill effects. We think we can be the exception, for example, to things like sexual immorality. We'll just call it love and we'll experience no ill effects. So we can live with whoever we want to live with. We can define marriage however we want to define marriage. We can define love however we want to define love. We think we can live undisciplined financial lives and stay ahead of the stupid and still believe that we're generous. We think we can watch whatever we want to watch and listen to whatever we want to listen to and it won't affect us. It won't park images in our minds. It won't park thoughts in our minds that will tempt us and lure us away from God and his revealed will for our lives. It won't affect us. We think reality will adjust for us. It reminds me of uh, a line that Ravi Zacharias used to like to quote from a, a longer poem called Creed. It's a fascinating poem. It's, it's a long poem, but uh, here's just one section of it. So the author is reflecting basic, basically on the beliefs of our age. It's kind of a satire on the beliefs of our age. And here's what he says. 
We believe that each man must find the truth that is right for him. Reality will adapt accordingly. The universe will adjust. History will alter. That's what we believe. And, and we think this rocket man was crazy. Now, tomorrow, we're going to talk about God's moral reality and how living in line with it means good things for us. But for today, we need to understand that reality has edges. It will not adjust for us. So much of the suffering in our personal lives and in society at large is because we refuse to accept the nature of reality. We live like it's something we can hedge. We can't. We can't. Reality has edges, and running up against it over and over again, it's going to have an effect. Now, we don't have time to go into this like I would really like to, but look, if, if you've run up against the edges of reality before, or repeatedly, or if you're still doing it, if you've run your life into these edges over and over again, and you see the damage you've done, what do you do? What do you do? Well, Scripture is clear on this. Repent and be forgiven. If there's another person involved, be reconciled as much as you are able. And receive the gospel. Receive the gospel. Because God's gospel heals. It forgives, it uplifts, and it restores. Yes, there may be broken pieces everywhere. And the broken pieces of your life, they may linger. But God's gospel heals. It heals our hearts now, and it will bring that healing to completeness and fullness on the day when Christ returns. And you know what? That's real. It's real. That is reality, and it will be reality forever. It's the reality God is preparing for us, and the reality God is preparing us for when he redeems our natures, and we finally see the edges of reality not as edges to hedge, but as diamond-like facets that reflect God's glory. So much more to, to think about and talk about on this subject. Certainly always welcome your questions and comments. You can always uh, email me and so forth. I'll put my email here in the comment line one more time, just in case you don't have it handy. And I better, better, better make sure I spell it right. It, and I, there we go. So you're always welcome to send me an email. You call, text, message me through Facebook. Uh, uh, stop in and visit. That's perfectly fine. I feel free to hit the share button and invite other people to be in reflection and thought on this in prayer. We need, though, to take a few moments to go to God in prayer. So let's do that. God of all wisdom, according to your goodwill, you have seen fit to create and order the universe with a regularity upon which we can rely. You have also seen fit to fix morality in place, even to etch it in our own hearts. And we can no more hedge your moral laws without ill effects than we can hedge your physical laws without ill effects. And so much of the suffering in our lives we have brought upon ourselves as we have repeatedly run up against the edges of your moral reality. Forgive us for placing so much faith in ourselves. Forgive us for believing your laws were pliable. Teach us to see the fixed edges of your moral laws as diamond-like facets that reflect your goodness and glory. And finally, give us a joyful anticipation for the day of Christ's return, when he will heal our hearts and mend our broken lives. We are bold to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks for taking time to be with me. I always appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to think with you and to pray with you, and always welcome your comments. So I plan to be back tomorrow morning at 7.30. Hope to see you then. Thanks.